Hey y'all, welcome to Out of Cat Customs, where in this video, I'm doing some full-on race car stuff. I'm locking out the mechanical advance in my MSD Pro Build Distributor, so y'all stick around. See, I got my C10 sitting in the shop and I'm doing a whole lot of winter upgrades to it. One of the big upgrades I'm doing is I'm upgrading the entire ignition system. Uh, I'm going with a MSD Digital 6 Plus ignition box as well as this MSD Pro Billet Distributor. Um, the MSD uh, box, ignition box I'm using, has a whole lot of features that I'm really going to enjoy the track, including a built in uh, two step rev control as well as a uh, ignition time and retard. So when I'm using uh, nitrous, which I'm also installing for my winter upgrades, when I'm using the nitrous at the track, I can actually uh, engage that, that feature on the box and pull some timing out so I can help save the engine uh, when I'm really running on hard with the nitrous. So I can't wait to play with the ignition box once I get uh, at the track. But uh, before I install this distributor, I have to do a little bit of work to it. So let me show you what I'm doing in right now. So this MSD Pro Build Distributor, it's got a lot of really nice features and it's built to be easily adjustable so you can really uh, set your timing curve uh, when you're building the engine. Uh, so, you can, so you can really uh, dial in that ignition timing curve so you get a good smooth run in the in engine throughout the uh, power curve. Um, the uh, weights, the way the weights and the springs are set up is they're really easy to get to. Uh, just pull the, uh, the cap off and you get right to the, uh, the weights as you can see in this video. And uh, the weights and springs are on top, and it has the stop bushing uh, under it, uh, held in by a nut on one of the uh, uh, rods that goes through the through the uh, advanced part of the uh, distributor here. And uh, as the engine uh, builds RPMs, the weights will slide out, and that'll add add your ignition time, and that's where the adva mechanical advance comes in. Um, so you can change the uh, uh, weight of the springs to uh, to allow the uh, the weights to come out faster or slower, depending on what you need. And uh, the stop bushing that comes into play on, uh, that allows you to change the size of the stop bushing to actually um, cause it to have more or less uh, total timing advance. So you can really, it's just really easy to tune these things. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm actually locking all these features out. I don't have a whole lot of time to be trying to uh, tune all this stuff. I, I, I live too far away from the track and I just, I'm actually trying to get this truck running right now to go to go racing um, this weekend. It's it's a Wednesday night and I got to have this truck on a trailer ready to race Saturday for the first race of the season. So uh, I know that uh, locked out timing works really well. So that's what I'm doing is I'm actually pulling this distributor apart and I'm going to lock it out. Uh, so I'm going to start taking it apart and show you step by step of how to lock out this distributor right here. All right, so as you can see, I already have this distributor uh, already done. I've already got it locked out, uh, but I'm gonna take you step by step how to do it. Um, so you start off by removing the cap, and uh, once you get the cap removed, you can actually see it. the cap goes on only one way. It is a square peg and a round peg, and in, in the uh, on the top of the, the sugar right here, you can see where the uh, where it mounts in it, and it indexes onto your uh, on your to your distributor. So it's really easy not to mess this up. It just this uh, bolts back on when you're done. Uh, but you take this off and you set it aside. And uh, the next thing you do is you can actually remove the uh, springs, uh, very carefully pull the springs loose. And uh, I'm gonna keep mine just in case uh, I do want to tune the engine later, uh, set up the mechanical advance I can. So I have these, these springs and uh, weights and everything. And I'm gonna put them in a bag with the other uh, weights and springs that comes with this distributor. Uh, so I can try to use them at a later date, but very carefully pull the spring and the bushing under the spring off and set those aside. And then you can take both of the uh, weights off and you can set those aside. And on the back side, under the uh, um, distributor plate right here on, on the um, distributor, you can see the uh, nut right here. And I used an a, a, a 11 seconds wrench to pull it apart. 
and just uh, when, once you get that nut off, that's where the stop bushing is located. And uh, you pull the, uh, take the nut off on a washer, and then you have to make the, st the stop bushing fall off out of, out of the hole there. And uh, you can set all that, that aside. And uh, next thing you need to do is you have to uh, take the roll pin out of the distributor gear on the bottom of the distributor. Uh, so what I did was I used that, just a block of wood and I set it up on my table and I used a uh, punch and just very carefully uh, you just drive the uh, roll pin out of your distributor gear. Um, you, this is the same step that you'll use if you're going to change the distributor gear. If you're going to a, um, a roller cam, uh, you have to change the gear uh, to work with, with a roller cam uh, versus a, a, uh, a older style flat tap cam. So it's not really hard to do. Uh, just knock, knock the pin out and, and the uh, gear comes off. And then once you get the gear off, you can push the uh, shaft up back up through the um, distributor base itself. And as you can see, this uh, that's where the uh, oil pump is, is turned, is on the bottom of that shaft. So once you push the um, shaft up through the uh, base of the distributor, um, you can see that the it has two parts up here, and that's where the uh, advance comes in. It's, it's the two parts that are allowed to spin. So when you pull it up, you just turn the inside portion 180 degrees from the um, the large hole where the stop bushing and stuff is. You just turn that, in, that inside section 180 degrees to the small hole, and then you slide it back together, and then you put your uh, the nut and washer back on, tighten that down, and then you have the uh, distributor is locked out, so it can't it can't have any advance. And uh, once you get that that turned and, and uh, locked down, and then you turn back around and go back to your uh, uh, the gear on the bottom side, and you very carefully uh, drive the roll pin back through the uh, the gear, and then it's done. You have it done probably in you know 10 or 15 minutes if you're not trying to make a YouTube video of how to do it. So uh, it's really simple how how it works. So I'm about, to, I'm about to stab this distributor in the truck and I'm about to fire it up for the first time since I uh, took it apart back in December when I started working on the truck. So uh, about to stab this in and uh, start working on it. I actually have uh, the installation of this distributor. Um, I did it while I was, um, before I was putting my nitrous in, I actually had the carburetor off doing the nitrous video. So I installed this distributor um, way back when so uh, if you want to see that, I have the uh, install, installing my ignition video and uh, installing the distributor will be in that video. So uh, I'm going to dive, dive in here and uh, get this installed and uh, see if we can get it fired up, see how she runs. chose to lock out the mechanical advance uh, on my distributor. Um, I've done it for a couple reasons. First off, I have a, a really deep gear um, for the drag race. I have a 411 gear with a 28 inch tall tire. Um, and also have a very uh, loose converter, I have a 10 inch um, stall converter. Um, so and when I'm on the trans brake, I'm already stalling at about 3,600 RPMs. Um, and when I'm driving, the converter is loose enough that by the time the engine has enough load on it for the timing to matter, it's already at an RPM above where the timing advance would have already came in. So it's just not really necessary um, for, for my setup. Also, um, my engine is basically junk. It is a uh, legit stock bottom end camper 454, um, stock, stock rod, stock pistons. So this big block only has 8.2 to 1 compression and it has a really small cam. So it's really soggy on the bottom end of the torque curve, torque curve and stuff. So having uh, the timing and stuff sit precisely on it isn't, ne isn't really necessary um, for the bottom end of the engine where the mechanical advance could, uh, could help me out a lot. 
Um, so I know it'll run like that. So with the addition of running nitrous, I wanted to make sure that I wouldn't have any, any kind of erratic timing or something that I may have missed or a possibility of having the timing off and, and possibly spiking the timing on it while I'm cramming this poor old stock big block with a, a whole lot of giggle gas. So I did it mainly just for safety and just for ease, ease of maintenance on it. So that's why I decided to run with a locked out timing. Um, if you're running a truck that has um, more street, street worthy gears, uh, or you're running a stick shift truck on a heavy uh, stock pickup truck or something that you're using, uh, more for work, uh, more for work, pulling trailers, you know, plow truck, four-wheel drive, something that you're going to use the, the bottom end of your torque, uh, your power uh, off out of uh, power. You're really going to want your uh, mechanical advance dialed in because that's where that's where it really matters is, is for the off idle. Uh, once you get up spinning 3,000 RPMs or higher, usually that's where you're going to want your timing all in at 3,000 or above. Sometimes we, you're going to want a lazier timing curve, but for the most part. About 30,000 is where most of the time the curves uh, lay out anyways. Um, especially if you're running a, a higher compression engine, more performance based engine, the, the, having the right timing and having a good timing curve is extremely critical so you don't burn one up. Um, so that's why I didn't run, uh, don't run a mechanical advance in mind. And uh, it can be a good idea uh, or a bad idea depending on your application. It works for mine, so take that with what you will as far as your application goes. So that just about wraps this video up. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, make sure you like and subscribe at the bottom of the page, and keep on coming back to Alley Cat Customs.